Welcome friends, family members, and honored guests. We are here on this beautiful afternoon to celebrate love. Love organizes our large and sometimes unpredictable world. It is that which enshrines and ennobles our human experience. It is the basis for the peace of the family and the peace of the peoples of the earth. The greatest gift bestowed upon humans is the gift of love freely given between two persons. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Please be seated. Please bow your heads as I offer this opening prayer written by Robert Louis Stevenson. Lord, behold our family here assembled. We thank you for this place in which we dwell, for the love that unites us, for the peace accorded us this day, for the hope with which we expect the morrow, for the health, the work, the food, and the bright skies that make our lives delightful, for our friends in all parts of the earth. Amen. Kendi and Ross, I believe I speak for every witness here when I say, may your thoughtful choice to join your lives, the obvious love that you have, and your shared devotion and commitment to this marriage bring you everything you have ever hoped for. And despite the stresses inevitable in life, may you always have laughter, excitement, and a prosperous future. And now Kendi and Ross have invited Kim Kovach to read Dr. Seuss's Oh, the Places You'll Go. <laughs> oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the guy, or girl, who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. <laughs> it's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen, and frequently do, to people as brainy and footsy as you. <laughs> and when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening, too. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. And wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say, but sadly it's true, that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump, and chances are then you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. <laughs> you will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. How dare you stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right, or right and three quarters? Or maybe not quite. Or go back around and sneak in from behind. Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker-upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start into race, down long wiggled roads at a breaknecking pace, and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, for a most useless place, the waiting place, for people just waiting, waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or waiting around for a yes or a no, 
or waiting for the hair to grow. <laughs> Everyone is just waiting. <laughs> waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or perhaps waiting for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where the boom bands are playing. <laughs> with banner flip-flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you're that kind of guy. Oh, the places you'll go, there is fun to be done. There are points to be scored, there are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame, you'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wild world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. <laughs> I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. <laughs> there are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, though the hack and cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life is a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft. And never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guarantee. Kid, you'll move mountains, so be your name Bucksbaum or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai Alley Van Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Words to live by. <laughs> it's been said that marriage is a relationship between two people in which the independence is equal, the dependence is mutual, and the ob obligation is reciprocal. Kendi and Ross, you are now to bring together the best parts of your individuality, uniting spirit, talent, and experience to create something better than either of you alone can offer. I humbly offer the words of author William A. Peterson in The Art of Marriage, who I believe has captured in words the essence of that commitment. I hope you'll keep his words upon your heart and refer to them often. The little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say I love you at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is at no time taking the other for granted. The courtship should not end with the honeymoon. It should continue through all the years. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers in the whole family. It is doing things for each other, not in the attitude of duty or sacrifice, but in the spirit of joy. It is speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It is not expecting the husband to wear a halo or the wife to have the wings of an angel. It is not looking for perfection in each other. It is cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It is having the capacity to forgive and forget. It is giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow. It is finding room for the things of the spirit it is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, dependence is mutual, and the obligation reciprocal. It is not only marrying the right partner, it is being the right partner. This is the art of marriage. And now we've heard from Dr. Seuss. We've heard from another author, we will now hear from Robert Fulham as the wedding party offers words from all I ever really needed to know I learned in kindergarten. 
share your things. Play fair. Don't hit. Clean up your mess. <laughs> Say you're sorry. Wash the toilet. <laughs> Live a balanced life. Be aware <laughs> of wonder. <laughs> Learn some and think some. Draw some and paint things. And sing and dance and play and work every day. And it is still true, no matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it's best to hold hands and stick together. And now Kendi and Ross will exchange their vows of marriage. <laughs> Kendi, I love you. First time I met you, as I labored to figure out how to spell your beautiful name, <laughs> I had no idea that you would play such a huge part in my life. If only after two weeks of dating, I knew I loved you and wanted to marry you. Five years later, I get to. Already we've grown together, adapted together, laughed together, learned together, struggled together, shared some of the best moments of my life together. My days are always brighter when I can bask in the emanating sunlight of you, even in the winter months of Ohio. <laughs> I'm ever in awe of your contagious, overflowing happiness utmost appreciation for the people around and unending willingness to be there for those you love. Every time I look into your gorgeous blue eyes, I know that I've found the missing piece to my puzzle. I can't begin to imagine life without you and the dynamic of both our stubborn tendencies. I will continue to love you, be patient with you, support you, and take care of you with all my dedication. The future holds great things for us and I would share it with only you. I truly hope I can make you as happy as you have, have, have made me. Like a fine wine, as one we'll age and mature together, bringing out each other's best and most delight, delightful characteristics, and ultimately leave this world with brilliance and fulfillment. I love you. For us, I am so excited about this day in our future. You are my best friend, and I love you so much. There was something special about you that had me hooked from the day we met, and getting to know you through college was such an adventure. You were driven, responsible, respectful, and always willing to help anybody. Most of all, you were, most of all you were and you continue to be extremely loving and compassionate towards me. Each day, I am reminded of how lucky I am to have you in my life. Because of you, I am becoming more mindful, more curious, more motivated, more satisfied, happier and stronger in so many ways. You truly bring out the best in me. You never cease to amaze me with your brilliant thoughts, and I promise to listen and respect them always. <laughs> As we go through this journey together, I will be by your side through happy and sad times. I vow to love you faithfully and unconditionally, and I will support you and work with you to achieve all that we want to do in life. May I have the rings, please? The wedding ring is a symbol. It's a symbol in visible form of the unbroken circle of love. Kendi and Ross, wherever you go, may you always return to your shared life together, and may these rings always call to mind the power of your love. Give you this ring to wear upon your hand as a symbol. To wear upon your hand as a symbol. Of my endless commitment and love for you. Of my endless commitment and love for you. I give you this ring. To wear upon your hand as a symbol. <laughs> to wear upon your hand as a symbol. Of my endless commitment. Of my endless commitment. <laughs> and love for you. I love for you.
Today we symbolize this relationship further through the pouring of these two individual containers of sand into one. One representing you, Kendi, and all that you were, and all that you are, and all that you will ever be. And the other representing you, Ross, and all that you were, and all that you are, and all that you will ever be. As these two containers of sand are poured into the third, they are joined together as one. As the sand is blended, we see it flows together in a new pattern that allows us to see the individual colors while appreciating the creation of something new and beautiful. Just as you encourage and support one another's individuality in the context of a strong union, our prayer for you today is that your lives together be longer than the time that it would take to separate these individual grains of sand. God, we ask that you bless this marriage as Ross and Kendi begin their journey down the road of life together. May they respect each other's likes and dislikes, opinions and beliefs, hopes and dreams, and fears, even though they may not always understand each other. May they rest in the knowledge that no matter what happens, by holding on to each other, things will work out for the best. Most of all, dear God, help them to keep the torch of love burning with the fire that they now share in their hearts. Amen. It is love that brought you both here today. It is love that makes yours a glorious union, and it will be love that makes your marriage endure. Love has given you wings, and your journey begins today. This is a journey that no two have traveled before. It is unique to you. Wherever life may take you, you will stay by each other's side. I therefore join with everyone gathered here today in our wish for your relationship to flourish and grow throughout a long and happy life together. Kendi and Ross, you have consented today to be bound to one another in lawful marriage. You have made special promises to each other, which have been symbolized by the joining of hands, the taking of vows, and the giving and the receiving of rings. Therefore, by the authority vested in me by the state of Ohio, I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce for the very first time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Ross and Kendi Warden. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.